and uh, choir community net dot uh, net uh, really helpful in terms of resources on the website and I've done the distancing which has also helped me work with my own choirs um, but we have one or two Zoom issues and that's useful to know how everybody is managing with the same sort of issues so thank you Craig for setting this up. You're very very welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we made this free because um, we believe that some of you are are needing a few more mm. tips and guidance to run your own choirs and mm. uh, we're just simply sharing a few things that we've learned over the last few weeks um, i actually had to because i run three choirs and two of them are community choirs with a quite a high average age and so as soon as the lockdown happened um, i just had to get going on this because it seemed the only way to do it um, I'd only been involved in Zoom meetings before, as in as in speaky, talky meetings. I hadn't done any music over it, but I was aware of some of the pitfalls, and we've kind of found that out things as we as we go along. Mm. Um, that's how it is. Anybody else want to? We've got another couple of minutes. Anybody else want to share where they're from? Chrissy Mason, your hands are up. Tell us where you are. I'm, uh, I'm from a place called Thorncliffe. Okay, Chrissy, come on, Chrissy. I'm going to stop you right there. Right, Chrissy, I'm going to stop you right there because we've now are encountering a problem that we get quite a lot. Uh, did anybody have breakup from Chrissy's microphone then? Yeah. yeah. We couldn't really hear what you were saying, and it's probably to do with the broadband connection in your house. Now, it's one of two things. Either your broadband connection isn't particularly fast, or there's other members of your family who have things on at the same time. <laughs> Okay. She disappeared. Has she gone? <laughs> She's going to try and come on again, isn't she? I've turned my video off. Yes, well help. done. You see, that's Please. clever. So you knew the other thing. The other thing is that your video takes quite a lot of your memory. And so if you turn your video off, you sometimes get a better signal going in and out. Are there any other um, devices in your household which are uh, sucking up um, a broadband, Chrissy? I have a house full of technology, but there's only me sat here at the moment. Is it? Might it, might it be on in the background? I mean, have you got a, la a, a you know, an iPad that on, that's on and connected? Oh, yeah, there's probably a few tablets around in the so, house. And well, I'd make sure that all the tablets and all the phones are off when you, if you're doing this. That's one thing I would try and say. Okay, right. Well, I'm going to start now, if that's all right. Um, I've got three pages of you on my Zoom screen. And uh, are you aware? Are you aware of the different pages on the Zoom screen? If you're on a laptop or desktop, you can skim between the pages. I think if you're on a, a pad, then you have to swipe or something. Um, so there we are. You're being very good. Most of being very quiet. You've muted yourselves, which is excellent. Your etiquette is superb, <laughs> and you will have gathered that uh, one thing we have to do during Zoom sessions is to make sure there's only really one person making a noise at one time and that might be you saying something or teaching something or it might be you choosing somebody to say something or ask a question and you can mute everybody unmute that single person and then off you go however uh, i've got a list of things i'm going to go through here with you and then there'll be questions at the end we might have a little bit of fun as we go along hopefully and but uh, you might want to take notes uh, things I didn't fully uh, explain or things I, you didn't fully understand, write them down, jot them down. Um, if, uh, if there's something really vital and you can't get my attention, then uh, type it in the uh, message to me personally and I will get that. You can type to everyone and everyone will see your message as well. That's another way of doing it. But the one I do um, to get people, ask people to get, uh, get my attention during a choir session and also now is the two-handed wave. All right. So if you do the two handed wave, uh, that will get my attention. If, it, uh, if you do a one handed wave, it's n inadequate because so many times I've been caught out. I've said to I said, Roger, what do you want? So oh, no, I was just I was just waving at Melanie. So all my <laughs> they wave at each other constantly with the one hand, which is why I use the two handed wave for them to get my attention. Um, and as you'll see throughout the session, if you've been to a distancing, you know that I refer to you quite often. And I, I take it in small bite-sized chunks to make sure that we don't go too fast or too slow for anybody. And um, I'm just going to... Oh, hey, Megan, how are you? I'm just going to mute you while you're moving around there. Uh, if you see somebody moving around like that, give them a quick mute because it can be very noisy if they're t settling down. 
there's a nice lady from my community choir who insists on carrying her iPad round the house the whole time throughout the session. And she keeps unmuting herself and then carrying us all through different, like giving us a, a little tour of her house, which is all very illuminating. But um, as you know, it can only take one person to uh, kind of ruin a session or at least hijack a session. Now, the first thing I'm going to say straight off is that you all need to know this that zoom have upgraded their uh uh their what do you call it the version of zoom that they're using and you all need to upgrade to 5.0 and you all need to get your choir members to upgrade to 5.0 as well it's urgent before the end of may if it's free to do it if they don't do it they won't be able to get on the session so that's the first thing to say uh when you come on to zoom on the zoom website there's a bar, bar at the top it's very easy it explains why they're changing to five point. It gives you a <coughs> to click, and you can and you can click that link and you go straight through to it. Now, listen, it's very important. Not only you need to do this, but all your choir members or anybody who's ever going to attend your session needs to do that before the end of May, which isn't that long, is it? Let's face it. What's the date today? I'm just going to check it. It's the Friday the twenty ninth. It's literally only a couple of days. Susan, you've got my attention. Sorry, what happens if you don't get them to date by the end of May? Well, it hasn't happened yet, so we're not entirely sure. But um, what they say is, I've read a few things, it says that people will not be able to get on your Zoom session if they don't. Uh, the reason for the upgrade is really important. They're fixing a lot of bugs. They've actually created a couple of bugs while they've been upgrading, as you may, you may know, but they'll be sorted in due time. Um, it's all to do with security. I'm just going to mute you all there because someone's got a little echo. And um, so from now on, I'm going to use the passwords for all my meetings. A lot of you will do that already. And in fact, if you if you don't change the settings um, and you schedule a meeting, you get given a password anyway. I think you have to actually un unclick that if you don't want the password. But I would recommend you all use passwords that you only email the password um, privately to the people you want to come on your on your session uh, and that you don't. Um, uh, publish any zoom links anywhere just don't do that because there are people out there who are surfing from zoom session to zoom session and and uh hijacking it we had heavy metal posted we had bad, all lots of all, all sorts of bad stuff that hasn't happened with my choirs yet by the way it was only a a public thing that where the zoom link had been put on facebook so just make sure that doesn't happen so uh that's the first thing so you're going to upgrade i would also say that uh, if you are going to lead sessions, you do need to pay the extra upgrade. Don't use the free Zoom for leading sessions because you will come a cropper. A, it's insecure. B, you don't get all the options I'm going to take you through today. C, it runs after 40 minutes. You have to start a new, start again and start, you know, generate a new code and all that. I would imagine that most of you are on the upgrade. Is that right? Are you nodding and saying you're not Ruth? OK, well, if you're going to lead a session, I would really recommend it's really if you're going to do a lot of these. And let's face it, it looks like we're going to be doing this for another good few months yet, if not into next year. It's only one hundred and twenty pounds for the whole year and it gives you so much more control. Uh, but it's worth doing the annual thing because that's the best deal you get. Um, so all the stuff I'm going to take you through today is uh, some of it is only available on that slight upgrade okay there's a second upgrade where you can go to 500 people you won't need that just do the first upgrade and it's really really worth really worthwhile uh, so i'm going to say this is what i do this is the way i run my sessions everyone has a different style i'm going to tell you what works for me today uh, but i'm still learning um the thing about the zoom is that everyone is on different platforms so you will discover that there are people in your choirs who will come on maybe on a laptop maybe on a, a desktop They'll be on a PC, they'll be on a Mac, they might be on an iPhone, they might be on an Android phone, they'll be on an iPad, they'll be on a tablet, you know. Zoom works for all these things, that's part of the beauty of it. But all the different options are either limited or they're somewhere else on those, on those uh, devices. I would very much uh, encourage you to encourage your uh, members to use laptops with good speakers or desktops with speakers. Or if you've got um, a pad or a phone, try and link it to um, a Bluetooth speaker somehow. So they have a, a bit of a, an ex, 
an experience of singing with a choir. If they're just singing with a phone and all they can hear is a tinny sound coming out, it's not going to be like a choir for them. So the best experience for them is if they have the best possible sound. So if they can't get speakers, if they are on a phone or either on an iPad or a tablet, ask them to use headphones. And it's good to have one on, one off. Um, I have some uh, friends of mine who who use headphones all the time. They love it. Um, uh, uh, it gives them the best sound, even if they're using a phone or a tablet or a, an iPad. Right, now, when you are uh, about to do a meeting, how, has anybody never done a meeting before, never done their own meeting? Are you here to find out how to do it, or have you all led meetings before? Natasha, have you led a meeting or you've never done it? Okay, right, well, I'm taking it, this is good. Some of you will know all this, and some of you won't, but I'm going to actually show you on my screen what I do when I schedule a meeting. Uh, when I share my screen, I always prepare the what I want to show you underneath, behind, before I start sharing. That is the best way to do it. I'm just going to sign in here. Hold on a minute. All right, can you all see that? Yeah, I'm going to make sure you can see that. Can you just just thumbs up if you can see that? Lovely. Okay, a few, I can see a few of you there. So. This is the profile screen. I don't mess around with this so much. Um, I kind of leave that as it. it's got um, emails and passwords and that sort of thing. The, what I use quite a lot is the schedule a meeting at the top here. That's how I start my meetings. I always schedule a meeting from the website version. I never do it from the app, if you know what I mean. If you have to do it from the app, there are ways of doing it. But for me, this is the most secure way and the most useful way of ga getting the information you need out to your choir. So first of all, I go over here and there you've got profile meetings, webinars, recording settings. You can preset a lot of your, your parameters on here. It goes a long way down, so I won't take you through them all, but just be aware that under settings there's a lot of options. And you can make sure the videos are on. These are things that come up when you schedule a meeting anyway. You can make sure passwords are required. You can make uh, it possible for people to chat. You can make it possible for people to transfer files. You can make it possible to make co-hosts. Um, you can always show the control bar during a meeting. That's very good. I've put that on now because that's good. When I went to screen sharing before, the control bar would disappear and I would have tr tr trouble finding that again. So lots of options there. I'm going to go back now to schedule a meeting, which is at the top there. This is what you really need. So when, you, when you're starting a session before it, about a week before, you will be going to this page here. And I like to name my meetings. So let's name this meeting um, Let's make what use one of our well-known lockdown puns. Quarantine. Uh, let's say number number two hundred and fifty-six. It's uh, quite quite a long way into lockdown here. Doesn't need a description. Then you go down here. This is when it's going to be. It's very helpful. I always like to click the little um, little calendar here, and there you drop down to making sure you've got the right date. So this meeting, I'm this uh, non-event I'm I'm scheduling is actually going to be in June. So June, it's going to be on, let's say, June uh, Wednesday, the 3rd. Um, let's schedule it for, we'll have um, uh, 8 o'clock in the evening. Okay, so there we are. Make sure that's PM, not AM. Make sure that's set to what you want. I do some in the morning. I have to make sure it's AM when I do the morning. Now, the duration doesn't actually matter because if you've paid for the upgrade, you can start at any time and go along any time. But I do like to do a vague guide, so about two-hour session. Uh, make sure the time zone is correct. It's uh, UK time there, GMT plus one, that's uh, summer time. Now, I don't press the recurring meeting button. Some people do because they have the same code each week. I think that's insecure. I think it's unsafe. I send a new ID for every choir session that I do. Sometimes you need registration. That is, if you want to add your security, you can do that as well. I don't personally do that. Make sure the meeting ID is generated automatically. That where you get a new one each time, and as as I said before, I now are using I'm using a password every single time, and I'm making sure that's that's ticked anyway. But I haven't unticked it, and there is the password. It comes up again once you've got your meeting. I've selected video to be on and on for both host and participant. The default settings for this is off. 
And you may want to check this on every time to make sure you don't have to do that every time. Make sure the audio says both for computer audio and telephone if people are coming in from their phones or computer audio. Uh, ignore the dial-in thing there, that's for sort of meetings. Um, now, meeting options. Um, no, I don't want people to join before the host. I like to make sure that I'm there first. So that's not, not appropriate. Here's something I've learnt. It's good to have mute participants upon entry. That's not only because at the beginning, it's for latecomers and also for people who uh, have to go off a session and come back on again. For them to be muted as they come in would be great because if they've got something else going on in their house, like their uh, partner is starting to hoover next door and they come in there, that's all we hear. So make sure it's muted upon entry. I've chosen not to enable a waiting room. You can if you want, extra security, you have a waiting room, you can see who's coming in and out and you can let them in uh, as you want. But it's very, very um, sort of consuming of your, uh, of your attention. And uh, when I had a waiting room, it was a right um, pain in the neck because I had to keep letting people in and out all the time when I wanted to actually do the session. So I choose to have that off. Um, record the meeting auth automatically. No, I, I, I tend to want to do that uh, when, as and when I want. Only authentic authenticated users can join. If you click that, you have an extra level of authentication. Um, alternative hosts, I never know who they're going to be yet, so I don't pull that in. And there's the save button. I know what I want, so I'm going to click save. As soon as you click save, the meeting is in your box. So then, I want to double check that everything's right, and I go to meetings. So over here, I make sure meetings is selected, and you're, you're seeing all my private stuff here, so don't pass on to anyone. Here are all the sessions I've got coming up. Uh, quite a lot, isn't it? <laughs> Now, one, one of these doesn't exist. Uh, where is it? Qu quarantine number 256. There it is. This is the one that the uh, imaginary one that we, that we set up just now. It's got the information. And you can actually start it from this page and also delete it. There it is. But in order to get the information, I click on that blue line there. I click into it and up comes the information for that meeting alone. Here it is. Quarantine number 256. Uh, just check it. It's June the 3rd. There it is. 8 o'clock we did it. There's the meeting ID, there's the password, you can't see it at the moment, you can show it there, and you can hide it there, okay? And here's the invite link. Now, you can do two things. You can copy the invitation here, put it on your uh, palette, or right, and copy it and send it to people. Or what I like to do is I like to actually, making sure I've got more control over this, so I swipe that there, and I cut and paste it. So I control C there, okay? And then I go into the email that I want to send to all the choir and I put it there. Here's the link for next week, guys. And I put that in there. And then I separately also underneath that, I cut and paste the meeting ID as a separate because that's the link. That's the link straight into Zoom. Some people prefer to have the meeting ID, which they type in themselves. So I copy and paste the meeting ID. And then I also copy and paste the password. There we go. Control C, Control V when you want to paste it in. And that gives the choir the information, and that's a really secure way of doing it. Right, that's the scheduling a meeting. Um, so you've got your name, your time, your date. You go through the schedule page. We've got the passwords. We've got your video, auto meeting on entry. That's excellent. Right, now you've checked your settings. You have a meeting. When you have the meeting, you can open it actually any time. You can open it half an hour early. You can open it late. It'll still be there. And you can open it any time. I like to open mine 15 minutes before the start. My community choir like to start half an hour before because they want chat time. And uh, you may want to give them chat time. So if you have chat time, you can start it half an hour early. And if you haven't had your tea, you can turn off your video and you can mute yourself like this. I... And I always do that at the bottom corner where you have the mute button and you have the stop video button. You can stop and start the video anytime and you can mute anytime. Now, if you're on a pad or a phone, I know that you need to touch your screen and your options are elsewhere. Uh, but if you are one of those, you will know that. However, I have never led a session from a phone or an iPad and I wouldn't recommend it. If you've done it, then brave you, well done. If you can make it work, fantastic. Because I know that you can even share music from inside your iPad, but it, mu it must be tricky. And, and fiddly and it doesn't give you all the options that you have on the laptop or on the desktop. Okay, so I'm now going to take you through all the things that I see on my screen 
from left to right at the bottom. And I'm going to take you through some of the options and why they are useful and how I use them. And uh, when, at the end of that, I'm going to open it out for a few comments. All right. So we're just going to simply take you through all this stuff. So from the bottom left, you have the mute button. Mute my audio. It's a little picture of a microphone and it's got this LED, which is very helpful because it sees if you're speaking, that will be working. So you know you've got input. OK, so that's very useful. And you can turn that on and off. And I always tell to tell my choir, please mute yourself if you're going off to make a cup of tea. If you're doing anything other than sitting there quietly, <laughs> please mute yourself because anything can happen. On my first session, I had all sorts happen. What we had, we had people, there was somebody who was having cooking dinner next door. And I couldn't find out who it was because I wasn't aware of it. And so for the first half an hour, we had all the noises of dinner next door. There's a few ways I've found that you can mitigate that and they are coming up. So next to the mute button, you've got the little tiny arrow, which are the lovely audio settings. And you need to let your choir members know about this. So, for instance, if we can't hear them, if their microphone is on or off, they need to select their microphone. And the best thing to select if they have no microphone is same as system. So if you've clicked the little arrow up at the top of that little box, there's a little brown box, is same as system. Select that. Um, I also, I'm on an Airbook here, so I have a Mac Airbook microphone which is inside. And then I have my, the next one, I have another option because I do have another microphone. And because I'm leading sessions, I've bought a little extra microphone. Here it is, I'll show it to you. It's quite affordable, this. It's on a little tripod, so it's, it, you see that sits nicely. It's a USB microphone, so it goes right into the laptop at the side. This one is an Audio Technica. AT2020 and if you like the sounds that are coming out of this then maybe you want to get something like that but all you need to do is google USB microphones for zoom and you get the top 10 and you can see the prices and you can see the reviews actually the top 10 are all pretty good um, there's a little blue ball that you can get which has been highly recommended a bit more expensive than this but I've, I'm using this this new airbook has all the updates I borrowed one for the first month and uh, it seems to work okay Although it only gives me 25 maximum um, pictures per per screen. I've got 20 at the moment, four times five. If you want a really, 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 really good machine, you can have 49 and you can, have, you can select that for the number of people on your screen. So there we are. Uh, speakers, if you have different speakers, you can select them as well. Again, it's best to have same as system if you're struggling with that. And you can test your speaker and microphone there. But the most important bit of this little drop down menu is the audio settings at the bottom. If you'd like to all click that now, click on audio settings at the bottom of that option. And up comes a nice big white settings screen in the middle. Can you all see that? So now you can see this is the white box that's come up. I'm looking at the speaker at the top. You can test your speaker. But this is the important thing here, the microphone. OK. And here's a little bo box that some people have uh, pressed, the automatically adjust microphone volume. That is not a very good uh, option, I don't think. I prefer to have control over this. And you can see my slider. If you turn that off, then you use the slider here. And as lead of the session, I like my slider to be, it tends to work at about 60%. Okay, But make sure that your choir members have that down here at about 20, 25. And that catches the people who suddenly... Uh, put the hoover on or uh, start moving around or re reorganize their furniture in the middle of a session. Um, I'll just tell you one thing. On my third session that I came up, I came onto a chat session and this input volume had gone to 100 automatically without me asking it to. And they could hear the fans on my computer working. It sounded like, uh, again, the hoover was on. And um, I was trying to be very sort of uh, discreet and it didn't work at all. <laughs> OK, so there we are. That's interesting. And then down here, there's a thing you can hold the space key to unmute yourself. That's quite useful. I don't use that much, but some people like to use that. If someone comes in the room, they can hold their space bar and mute themselves and let go. The other really, really important button on here is this one down here that says advanced. So if you have that, click on that. I'm going to click on it now and show you what you need to do. And this is important if you're leading a session. This is almost the most important thing to know. This button here that says show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone, you must have that on there. 
and make sure that's on. Then you go back into the main screen, I'll show you what to do. And that makes sure that you are sending them the best possible sound from your machine to enjoy their session. If you're sending choir uh, recordings and your own singing as well, that will give you the best, they'll give them the best sound from your machine. Here, I've got suppressed persistent background noise or suppressed background noise here. I've disabled that from me, but it might be important that your members have that on, perhaps at moderate, perhaps even at dis aggressive. I've disabled that because that overrides this stuff, all right? You want to make sure that that's disabled if you're leading the session, because then you want to have better control over your, over your levels, okay? It's a gate, it's kind of like a compression, and it, it, it makes the sound uh, a little bit unnatural, uh, but it does disable the background noise that we don't want to hear. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go, go out of here now and then back into the main, the main screen, okay? So there we are, there's that, and that's all very useful. Uh, okay, you need to know different things from your members as well. So the setting of their level, their input level, I find that quite important. Have it at 20 or 30 so that when you do unmute somebody, like I'm going to unmute Evelyn now, coming to you Evelyn, I'm going to unmute you. I'm going to check your level. Unmute, unmute yourself. Yep. Right, so let's hear your level. How are, how are you? Let's hear, say hello from, to me. Hello, hello everybody. Now that sounds uh, quite loud to me. It, I could be because I... What did you have on oh, a couple of nights ago as a leader? So oh, of course you are right. And, and I had the uh, automatically adjust. So shall I change that? Yeah. Do you want to change that down to about twenty percent? And so let, let's all hear. Oh, it is. It is down at about twenty percent. But I'll take off the automatically adjust. So I haven't the changed anything. The automatically adjust, I think, overrides the slider. So ah, right. So it's yeah. on about twenty-five percent. Have it off. Make, bring it down to about ten. See what happens. Hang on. Go back into it again. So I'll well, keep talking. Mary had a little lamb. It's going down. It's going down now. Is that better? That is better. About it, 10 yes, it's, now. it's still really good. That's all we need. So if okay. you're speaking, that's all we need. So right. maybe, maybe we should tell your members to have it at 10%. That, maybe that's so good. users would be at 10%, but I would still be about 25. Yeah. Well, well, it's that 25 for you. As I say, you can see my, my one, my, okay. my one seems to be at 60. Am I too loud? No. Okay, so mine is at six. So it depends what, keep, keep experimenting. Okay. Ask your choir members, the people you trust who have good hearing, what they like, what they don't like, and have your settings set ac yes. uh, accordingly. Thank even that was really useful. Thank you, Evelyn, bless you. So that's the mute button, all that audio stuff. Now we've got video. So you've got the stop start video button. You can do that. And uh, obviously people, let people know that if they don't want people to see what's going on in the rest of their house, they can mute that. They can uh, have the video off the whole time. Some people might choir, they just come and they watch. They don't let anyone see anything and that is fine as well. So experiment with that. The stop video button also has a little arrow next to it and there's some options there. So click on that. And you've got, uh, you can select a different camera. Sometimes people have the inbuilt camera. Some people have outdoor cameras. That's the way you do that. There's a lovely little fun here thing that says choose virtual background. Let's experiment with that. I don't have many options here. Um, I can have the Golden Gate Bridge. I can have some weird wavy green grass that makes me look very odd. And then um, orbiting the Earth. There we go. That's what I have. There's the little sort of ring of the, uh, the eclipse there. So I tend not to have that on myself, but my members do like to do that. And then um, uh, for some bit of fun, people like to, you can select photos from your past holidays. And there are members of mine that always uh, come on from various desert islands that they've uh, they want to boast that they've been on. It's debatable whether that's actually a photo they've taken themselves, but it's, it does not it doesn't matter. It's quite fun to see. Now let's uh, let's while we're on it, let's see if anybody. Do you want to do some uh, virtual background? Keith, you're waving at me. Keith Walton, do you do, were you waving at me? Yes, I was only going to comment that you need unless you've got a plain background behind you, you need a powerful computer to uh, succeed with the um, that's okay virtual background and one or two people are trying it and uh, yeah. it's not working shall no, we it say. can be a distraction it can look like they're kind of um, like the predator coming in and out of a ghostly sort of shot yeah. so I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it too much you don't want you don't even need to um, to explain it if you don't want to but it's it's to have a bit of fun with it is nice can anybody uh, just show uh, Jim Garrick's found the Golden Gate Bridge but Jim you've disappeared so you, your room is too busy. There's too many things in your room. You need a, you need a blank background or a green screen to enable that to work. So, cause you've got interesting bass guitars there, haven't you? 
So you actually disappeared there, Jim. All we could see was the bridge. <laughs> so there we go. That's that's a thing that does or doesn't happen. Um, uh, lovely. And then also there's a video settings in there. And you can go onto video settings. This green, this white screen comes along there. You can change your ratio. Um, now mirror my video. Interesting one there. I I changed that uh, back actually today because I realised that um, people were seeing my room turned round, um, and uh, there's, it comes around the wrong way, doesn't it? If you're if you're if you're watching, the camera's looking at you. So what you're looking at. If you want to mirror the video, I want people to see what I'm looking at. So you can either mirror it or not mirror it. And there's a thing that says touch up appearance. And do you know, weirdly, it kind of works. It kind of, it kind of makes your wrinkles and your shadows a little bit smaller. Experiment with that. It's quite fun. Um, and there's some other options there that are or are not useful. So just be aware of those. Uh, the next thing along I have is security. And you can obviously get to these things from outside, from before you start the meeting, but you can do it within as well. You can lock the meeting. Now, I'm not going to lock this meeting, but if you want to have extra security and you don't want people to come and bomb your thing, or if they're really, really, really late and you want to shame them, uh, you can lock the meeting and then they enable a waiting room and then they can have to knock in. They have to knock. But if you don't want to worry about a waiting room, I wouldn't bother. I told you my experience with waiting rooms was not good. It was a big distraction. And unless you have a co-host who is working for you and doing all that and can do all that stuff, then I wouldn't worry about that if I were you. Um, allow participants to share a screen. Now, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Uh, again, the first session I had, um, that was uh, anybody could share the screen. And some lovely lady discovered it by accident. And what we didn't discover was how to turn it off for about 20 minutes. We were trying to tell her where it was and she couldn't work it. It's quite tricky. So at the moment, only I can share my screen. I can allow you to share your screens. And sometimes if you have um, a helpful person in your choir who's a designated librarian and they have all the music available and one person says, oh, please, I don't have the music. And I've started it already. They can type to the co-host, please, can you share the music on the screen? And although we've started the music already and I'm unaware of it, they can share the music from their screen, but make sure only the co-host can do that. Uh, then you've got a, a very useful thing, the participants panel, which many of you will be aware of. So you click on the participants panel and up come the participants on the right hand side. It should work somewhere. Is that right? You can now see everybody. You have access to everybody in the session. There are 49 people here. OK, and this is a really, really, really useful uh, list and for all sorts of reasons. Um, so I'm, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to point out that you have less options than me. You can go in, and that's one of the places you can rename yourselves. I'm going to ask you to do something now. Later on, we're going to go into a breakout rooms, and we're going to have a soprano, alto, tenor, and bass room. We've used this uh, successfully. You need somebody in each group to enable, to, to make that worthwhile with a piano, or who can sing and teach lines. Uh, and you need to make sure that they're happy with that before you do that. Um, but that's breakout rooms. And when you buy the upgrade, this enables you to do that. And it comes later. But uh, the reason I've, I've said this now is because I want you to all rename yourselves now. Can you rename yourselves with your voice part after your name? So, for instance, Evelyn Sutherland. I think you might be a soprano. I'm not entirely sure. But you would then you would name, rename yourself Evelyn Sutherland Soprano. I'm going to ask uh, Claire Tomlinson, what are you? Are you an alto, tenor or soprano? You're, you've done it already. You're well ahead of the game. Now, if you can't do this, wave at me and we'll then remind you how to do this. Joy Naylor, speak to me. Hello. Right, you need to rename yourself. Have you found your name on the participants panel? Yep. Don't click on it, just hover over it. Hover over your name, and then at the end of that, there should be a little thing saying more, a little more. button saying yeah. more. Click on more, and that's where your drop down menu is with the rename. Okay. Yeah, you've got it. You should all have it by now. Most of you are ahead of this now. Okay, so that is now you're ready. May, uh, it might be useful for you to tell your choir members to do this at the beginning of every session and from now on anyway, because it saves time later on. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is make somebody a co host. Uh, I have a co-host in all my sessions and it's very useful if I've started to um, do a piece of music and I'm conducting or I'm singing along or I'm thinking about the music 
and somebody say comes on halfway through maybe they had to go off they lost the signal they had to come on they unmute themselves and there's a lot of noise there something's happening in their house and there's a bit of an argument going on someone else needs to be able to mute them and find out where they are so if you make a co-host they also have a mute all button so does anybody want to become my co-host i'm looking for uh, volunteers uh, if you wave at me i'm going to make you a co-host right now who wants to who wants to become a co-host oh come on don't be shy paul holden thank you very much um i'm gonna just make sure you're happy with that unmute yourself have you been a co-host before uh not yet but will be you are gonna you're about to be now so i'm gonna i go to my um participants list i find paul holden there he is and at the end of his name you hover over don't click on his name hover over it there's a mute button there's a more button with a drop down menu in that drop down menu i can make him i can make him the coast the host i can make him the co-host i can spotlight his video and all sorts of things i can put him in a different room i've just made him co-host does that come up paul yes but paul can you confirm now that you now have the option a new button has appeared at the bottom of the participants panel and you can mute and unmute everybody yes yeah good I'm going to leave it like that, if that's all right, for the rest of the session. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, so Paul can now do that. So if I've started some music, all right, da -da 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 -da. on we go. I'm going to start some music, and somebody's going to make some noise. I'm going to start. Here's the music. Here all right. <laughs> right, Paul, will you mute everybody, please? I don't think is the unmuting. Yeah, uh, pause very quick. He realized that when he muted everybody, he muted me as well. And then uh, he have to quickly unmute. So that's the thing I, I forgot. Your co-host, make sure your co-host is quick on the button with the muting everybody and then unmuting you in the middle of a piece of music because then you obviously didn't hear anything for a few seconds. Uh, what might not be happening is the unmuting all. So Paul, will you try and unmute everybody now? Well, it worked for some, but not others. It's weird, isn't it? This is part of the bug that has happened since they upgraded to 5.0. But hopefully uh, the, new, the new version, they'll uh, fix the bug and uh, your uh, host and co-host will be able to mute and unmute people properly. That's the most useful tool you have. The muting tool, the unmuting tool is so useful because you can get, you, if people are, one person is making a noise, they don't realize it and it can ruin the session. You can mute everybody and make sure that's all fine. It keeps things flowing. And if you want to unmute everybody, let's have a cup of tea. Let's have a little chat and let's o let open it. Let's, let's feel like we're singing together. You can do that quickly as well. But um, do train your members to, uh, to uh, mute and unmute themselves quickly. Uh, and they, they need to be able to do it as well. Um, and next to participants is the chat option. So if you click chat, you'll notice there's been quite a bit of chat already. And the lovely thing about chat is that you can chat privately to anybody you like and everybody. So you, anybody can do this. You can uh, choose everybody. If you click on a name, you send the chat to, you start typing the word everyone. And then you can see it and you can say hello to everybody there in the bottom. And you can also have chats to, if I'm doing a particularly long, boring alto passage and the tenors want to sort of share something, you can chat to anybody there. And you can comment on people's wallpaper and, and all that sort of stuff. And uh, you can also uh, send files. You can post things there. And people have links there. We share it there. And actually, at the end of the meeting, you can record. You can save the chat as a file. So if people have put interesting information, once we uh, we did on the the day of the of the marathon, we did a 26 song marathon, and we we. Uh, we all uh, about uh, 50 of us and we all um raised money for different charities and what we did was we as we were singing we listed the charities in the chat and then at the end of it i had a list of all the charities it was easy. i just cut, cut cut and pasted it and it was very easy to send that off to people and uh, it was very 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 useful uh so if you have to go please do but we're going to crack on now uh nothing else about the chat thing i don't think there are a few more options there um, I can stop you chatting with it with each other if I want to. I'm not going to. Then we have the share screen button, which I did earlier. You saw that, didn't you? I shared the screen. If you're going to share the screen, make sure you have uh, something ready underneath. You don't want to sort of have to sort of fish around and fiddle around underneath. 
uh, too much with something. I'm just going to double check that I've got something ready that I want to show you. Uh, hold on a minute. Let me just check that that is. Oh, okay. Oh, I cannot minimize Zoom while I'm re recording the session. That's very interesting. Uh, let me just try and go underneath it. There we go. Yes. So I've actually got something ready for you. I'm going to share my screen. At the beginning of the, the session, I often do rounds and warm-ups. And so you can see that. So that's the By the Waters of Babylon. And I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to play this so you can hear it. By the waters, the waters of Babylon. Please tell the waters, the waters of Babylon. Okay, etc., etc. You got the idea. Um, and so uh, you may have cottoned on that I use prepared tracks for all the singing that we do together. But I have a piano uh, ready here in my setup. I've got, uh, I've got Logic open uh, with a piano sound. Just make sure there, there we are. Okay. Um, I'm sitting at a desk here. I have my other computer, which I play my music on. I'll just turn that around and show you. There it is, that's my screen. So I'm always zooming on a different machine than the one I generate the music from. You can generate music, of course, from within the session. I'll come on to that a bit later. So sharing the screen, very useful, particularly if people have not printed out the music you've sent them in advance. Sarah Alto, I'm coming to you. Unmute yourself. Okay, yes. I, um, when I screen shared with documents like you've done, um, I lost the... I lost the taskbar, or whatever you call it, at the bottom of my page. Yeah. And I did find myself having to go, where, whereas I'd lined everything up on the taskbar yeah. that I wanted to share. Of course you did. Including sound share, you know, my, my links to yeah. all those things were on the taskbar. When I shared the screen to mm -hmm. show uh, words or the music or something, then I, I couldn't get okay. hold of the, of the thing. And I had to go around the whole loop again, That's you know, fine. going right, into right. my files, choosing the right one, etc. Is that just yeah, a feature? Yeah. Yeah, you can sort it. Right at the very beginning of the whole thing, right, I shared you my settings screen right on Zoom. In your profile page, in the settings, there is an option there to keep the toolbar open when you share your screen. It's somewhere down there. I promise you it's there. It's on the original page. It's in your profile on the settings. And if you click that, whenever you do it from now on, you'll be able to access. I know you had to sort of if you didn't do that, you have to hover around, don't you, and, and, and find it. And, and I, I, I was like you, when I first shared, I didn't know where the unshare was. It was a bit, a bit of a nightmare. So yeah, and I couldn't find the participants to mute them, blah, 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 blah. But um, you can do everything. You just need to know where it all is. Uh, there we go. So share screen. Thank you. Um, uh, next to share screen, there's some um, sharing options. Um, make sure there's only one participant can share at a time. Make sure it's mainly you. Uh, in the advanced sharing options, uh, you can click only host, but you can change that to all participants. Say somebody says, oh, but I want to share something I found the other day, please, and I want to share some photos with you. You can then temporarily click that to make sure that anybody can share their screen, but make sure everyone knows that, that they're waiting for that one person to share. Okay, then the next thing that I've got on my uh, bottom on my toolbar is the recording button. You can record the meetings, you can pause and stop at any time. And at the end of the meeting, it just says, hold on, I'm just making that film for you. And it, you tell it where to go and it goes on your hard drive. You can also record to the cloud if you want. You don't have to record on that machine. And uh, okay. I know that Piers has, um, I've sent him all the films and he's edited them down. And some of them are available now on YouTube. It's another thing you have to use iMovie or whatever movie editing thing you have to sort of cut that up. You just get the whole thing in one go. You can also have the chat. You can have the sound audio only as well. There are, it's saving everything that you, that you want. And you can have options. Ditch what you don't want. Keep what you do. Then we have the breakout rooms button. I'm going to do breakout rooms now. Are you ready? Um, so now we're going to, are you ready for breakout rooms? Celia, what do you want? Unmute yourself. I can't unmute you. Um, if 
two of you are leading a session, you and a co-host. Yes. And either of you have the option to share their screen. If you oh, said good. only one person can share so, their so screen. So as soon as you make a co-host, they can share the screen. Okay, so you can go yeah. from one to the other. Yeah. And actually, you can make more than one co-host. You can make many co-hosts. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. It's not just one. You can make you can make multiple ones. Okay. Right. Are we ready? We're going to do breakout rooms. Um, very brief. You'll understand the the, the the way this is going to work. We're not actually going to learn something. I'm just going to put you in the rooms and come out again. So you have now given me your names uh, and your uh, your voices by your name. So it's easier for me to do it. There's a thing that says breakout rooms. I click on it. Right. Then it says assign 38 participants into however many rooms. I'm going to choose three rooms because one voice is going to stay with me. All right. We need three separate rooms and the room that we're in. Keep this room open. And it says either automatically or manually. Manually, please, because I want to actually tell people what they're going to be. Create the breakout rooms. Right. We've got breakout room one, two and three. Room one is going to be sopranos. Room two is going to be altos. Room three is going to be tenors. I'm going to keep the basses in with me in this room. I'm now going to assign you. So by at the top of this little uh, window, you'll see this uh, at the end of the breakout room one. It says assign. I click on the assign and all your names come up. And I said, uh, um, sopranos, I'm going to click down all the people who are, are soprano. They get clicked now. I'm doing it. I promise you it's happening. It's going to take a little while. If I knew exactly who you were before the session started, I could have done this from the option page at the very beginning. If I knew exactly who was coming on. But with my community queries, some people, I call them floating voters, and they change their, their voices in between. Right, so room one, you have been uh, assigned. Room two, I'm going to assign you, altos now. I go back to there. Alison Purdy, you're going into room two. Jane Bryant, Jess Rowe, uh, Catherine Ridgeway, Mandy Shaw, Margaret Crankshaw, Philippa Alto, Ruth Alto, Sarah Alto. You are in room three, room two, room three. I'm going to assign the tenors. In Cramp, Jim, Peter Kennedy, you're assigned. Everyone else, bases, stay in this room with me. You will see it happen. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open all the rooms and you will get an invite, each of you, to go into the new room. When you get the invite, click on it and go there. And then what I'm going to do is, just for a few minutes, I'm going to actually circle the rooms. So one of you would have been designated the leader. You'll have a piano or you'll sing. You will be leading, teaching a session for about 10, 15 minutes. And I can go between the rooms. OK, I have that option. I'm going to open the rooms now. Basis, stay where you are. Everyone else, you should click on the thing and off you go. We'll see you disappear. Have you got your invite? Yes. Click on the invite and off you go. We'll see you disappear. I'll visit all the rooms once and then I'll bring you all back. If you've not been assigned, I'm going to do it now. Bernie, for some reason I didn't assign you. I'm going to assign you to room two. Off you go. Everyone else is a base. Right. That was very useful because the list went smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the people who haven't been assigned are listed there. And then you have a thing that says assigned to. You can change their, change their room. So basses, blah, blah, blah. We sing a little bit. Let's sing a bass line. La, 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 la. Sing that. La, 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 la. Lovely. Basses, I'm going to go around the rooms now. I'm going to leave. Uh, who am I going to leave? Uh, Paul Holden, you're my co-host. Uh, you can chat about uh, music and stuff for two seconds while I go around the rooms. Uh, pretend you're uh, leading a session. I'm going to leave you to uh, teach the basses or do whatever you want while I'm, while I'm gone. I'm going to go to another room. Bye-bye. See you in a minute. As a Zoom with my community choir, and I'm very happy to play the piano for them, so that's okay. But I am aware that my own chat is coming on as a, as a singer. Right. Before you answer that, anybody, I'm just I'm just going through the rooms. All right. I'd love to hear you chatting and sharing stuff. I'm just saying hello to prove to you that as a leader, I can come and visit you. How are you doing, sopranos? Did you have you got have you learned bar eight yet? Good, excellent. Right. I'm going to go and see the altos now. <laughs> Uh, see you in a minute. Oh, hang on, breakout room. I leave, I'm leaving breakout room one. Bye. Bye. Howard, you need to unmute yourself. 
Hello, chaps. For some reason, I had to leave the first room to join the second one. Sorry, ah. I'm just passing through. Bye. Okay. Bye. Um... Had a bigger monitor, which I got all their pictures on. Hello, and Altos. Then... How are you doing? Hello. Sorry, then... to, sorry, Jess. I'm interrupting you. All I'm doing, carry on in a minute. I'm just passing through the rooms to show you that I'm doing it. And uh, have you learned bar 18 yet? It's pretty tricky, that bit. That... <laughs> <laughs> that out. Yeah, yeah, we know that. We got that crack. Don't we? Thank yeah. you. Brilliant, Sarah. Amazing. Right. I'm going to go to the tenor room. I'll see you in a bit. Hang on. Uh, no, no, no. Breakout room three, join. Carry on. Say, carry on what you were doing. Hello, tenors. I'm now going back out. Um, and uh, have you learned bar 18, by the way? The one that goes <laughs> that bit. Very true. <laughs> yeah, I know. What a pig. <laughs> uh, leave breakout room as yet uh, from people um, in, in asking for money back, but it's probably something that we wouldn't kind of object to. Yeah, right. Okay, thanks. Hi, guys. Sorry to break in. Um, Andrew, you're waving. You want to talk to yeah, Paul or me? So one of the Howard was just asking about um, whether people are still paying their fees and things. We oh, actually, okay. we yeah, well, it you know what? I'm going to. We'll do that at the very end because I think everyone will, 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 will want to hear that. It's a very good question. Okay. Say that to the end if you were still here. Yeah, right, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the breakout rooms. Are you ready? Close rooms. They'll all be coming back any second now. They'll close in 56. They can choose when to come back, but uh, it will definitely close in 52 seconds. Here they go. They're starting to come back now. <laughs> so, yeah, hold that thought. Really interesting. Um, uh, yes, I personally think that people should still be paying for, for sessions if there's maybe a little less. Uh, for me, for one of my choirs, there's no uh, there's no venue high. I don't need to hire the church anymore, so I've 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 knocked a pound off each session. But I still charge because it's a lot of work. In fact, it's probably more work doing these sessions than there were the the normal ones, particularly with the preparation of the tracks and that sort of thing. So um, and. Uh, yeah, you do what's right for you, I suppose. And if some people in lock in lockdown are having real financial problems, then you know you can sort that out individually, and do different different schemes. But um, let's chat about that when everyone's back. Now, some people have chosen to come back early. Everyone else is not coming back yet. They, they, they there's some lovely chats going on, but now they come back because they've been chucked out. <laughs> 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 they've been forced out. So we're yes, back. are you all back now? Yeah. Are you all back? So that worked well, didn't it? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, so you can see, so when I actually closed the rooms, it gave you a minute to finish what you were doing. And you obviously had some really interesting chats going on. You didn't want to finish straight away. And so, and then eventually after a minute, it chucked you out and it, you're forced back here. That's, so that's how it works. I've only done breakout rooms for say 20 minutes tops with my choir. Um, I want to make sure, you have to make sure that the person you are sending in there who's leading that, that session is really happy to do that has the skills and the and maybe a piano and some recordings maybe that's going to help them with that session um and that is very very useful oh the chat has reset have we lost the chat from before yeah. no. no i've got it all still i've got all the chat but there's a new one started but a new one started but i've got right the other one's all still there there's lots of you know what i'm going to go through all these questions at the end I'm going to save it all and we'll try and answer these questions uh, somehow, maybe on a blog on the on the choir community website. Yeah, we'll do that uh, if you have to leave and we haven't covered everything. So there's breakout rooms. Uh, next to breakout rooms is reactions. I'm not sure these are very useful. There's just a sort of yellow handy wave and a thumbs up, which I find I um, haven't found much of a use for it yet. I prefer the real thumbs personally. And, um, and the double-handed wave is the most useful thing there. Uh, one more thing that you might want to do, would anybody need to broadcast their sessions live on Facebook or YouTube? No? Would anybody yeah. would like to know how to do that? Yeah. The reason I have to do it is because there's some members of my choir who really can't take the Zoom experience. Uh, either they're... Uh, their, their equipment isn't up for it or they hate it or they just think it's too intrusive or the sound is bad for whatever reason they don't want the zoom but they like watching it on facebook and uh, what a previous i've done i've had a separate uh, my phone over here just simply live streaming me that's how i started uh but it doesn't give you the full experience 
because if you live stream from within Zoom on Facebook, they get to see the screen of the 25 people and they get to hear it and they can see the chat and they can interact a little bit more and they can, uh, uh, they can hear other people contributing. And the way they do that is next to the reactions button, if you're the leader, there's another button that says more with, a, with some dots. This will only happen if you upgrade and you're the leader. And then it says live on Facebook, live on YouTube, and on you go. You can do that. Uh, and you have to go through um, a little rigmarole. I'm gonna click that now, and I'm gonna share my screen very briefly. Okay, so this is what happens. As soon as you click it, it looks like this. It says, go live on Facebook, choose where you want to post your live video. And it's better to share it from a page that you manage. That's the best way to do it. But down the bottom here, I have a page that I manage. So you need to, on Facebook, prepare this. Make sure you have a page from your choir and you're the manager of that page. And look, choir community has come up with my first, my first one. I'm gonna, we're gonna actually go live now to prove that it happens. You click next. It takes a few seconds this, so you wanna maybe do this quite early on in your, in your session. And eventually it will come up and it will say, you are now live on Facebook. There we are, one more uh, option here. You can say something about the session and then you go live. This button down the bottom here in the bottom corner, click that, go live, blue button. No, I don't wanna add a title, go live anyway. Sometimes it's nice to add a title and you'll see this is about to happen. So you can see it takes about two minutes, two, two and a half minutes to actually do this. Uh, normally I do this at the beginning of a session, obviously I'm just showing you for now what happens there and then within the session now a little thing comes up it says live on facebook see at the top mm -hmm. red button live on facebook we are now live on facebook we are actually are live literally now. It now. we are and uh, mm -hmm. would make sure that if your choir members want to do this if they've got facebook on something else make sure they are muted their facebook is muted because uh it will be a, a 12 or 13 second delay and you get horrendous feedback and echoes it's awful uh, so make sure, before you do it, tell them that uh, we're going to do Facebook Live. Make sure you don't have both on at the same time. All right? Okay, that's that. Okay, um, I'm actually going to um, I'm stop that now. I'm going to stop the live stream now. I was just showing you. Right, we've stopped the live stream from there. Now, if you're going to do Facebook Live, and if you're going to record the session, you may also need to tell people that you're going to do that and read a disclaimer to them like I do on the distant sings. And Piers is quite keen that I actually tell you about this. Um, so you know the thing that I read out, it's something like, yeah. we need to make you aware, we are recording this session, we're putting it on social media. If you are joining the session and turning your camera on, you are providing consent for us to do this. If you don't want to be identified, turn off your camera by clicking your stop video button change your name by clicking your rename button and call yourself Mickey Mouse or whatever. And you can still enjoy the session, but people won't see you or see the things behind you. You may have personal items behind you, which you don't want to be shown, but we hope that you will keep your videos on because the more interactive we can make this, the better. All right. Now I will read that at the beginning of a session, maybe five to 10 minutes in. And Piers has said the best way to do it is to do it. Um, don't start the Facebook live stream until you have read this. Or I should have read this before I started the stream, okay? Because it's actually starting the stream that uh, you're asking their permission to do. So I should have read that earlier. Uh, do it about five or 10 minutes in. You can write your own disclaimer, whatever you want. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. And then the other thing is he suggested that I lock the room on the security button once I've read it to make sure people who haven't signed up to it don't get in. But we don't seem to have a problem with that, okay? All right, so we've just done all the thing. We've gone through all the options on the screen, pretty much. There are some other options deep, deep, deep within Zoom. I showed you them at the beginning. Go through that settings if you want to, and when you've got some time, see the other options that are available to you. You may think some of them are useful. I've only mentioned the ones that are useful to me. So then you run the session. I like to start a session 15 minutes early. I like to have some chat. My community choir likes to have half an hour chat time. Uh, they think that's really useful uh, and we have chat time afterwards as well um, 
music options. And you may or may not know that I always use another device to play my music. You can play music through the system, okay? Uh, but, and you can find that it does work, uh, but sometimes uh, it does cut out your voice weirdly. If you try and sing over the top, it can, make the, it can change the volume of the level of the, of the music you're, you're sharing. I've heard of some people who've tried to share from within their device and it hasn't worked at all. I would recommend to you that you have a separate device from which you play your tracks from. And in that way, you get the best sound coming in from the room. It sounds a bit more like a choir. You've got the ambience of the room. You've got you singing over the top. Okay, so I will, I will just again uh, demonstrate that uh, with my, maybe the By the Waters of Babylon. So did you hear me sing over the top there? Was the balance about right or did I kind of come over, was it too loud for me coming in over the music? Or do you know what? I tell you what, this is great. I've just noticed something that's happened. So part of the bug, this happened yesterday and it's happened again today. After doing breakout rooms, when I come back in, you know, I told you about the turn on original sound at the beginning. Very important thing. You have to turn on original sound if you're the leader. Well, mine has been turned off automatically. If you're the leader, be careful. As you come out of breakdown rooms, it goes back to off. So I'm going to turn that on now, and I'm going to do the same thing again, and it should be better. So I've now turned on original sound. On we remember we remember we remember so that should have shown you was that a better sound yeah 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 so that underlines the fact you must have that turned on and of course you know now this what you've got displayed on the screen is not what you've selected it's what you haven't selected so if you've got if you've got displayed the words turn off original sound it means you have it on and that is the correct thing to have it's the same way with the uh, speaker view gallery view at the other end on the top corner, which we didn't cover yet. Um, are you aware of speaker view gallery view? Yeah. So on the top right hand corner, you've got that. And the one that you can see is the one that you are not on. So you select it. I've now got, I can see speaker view. I'm going to select speaker view. When I select speaker, for some reason, it thinks that Paul Holden is speaking to me, <laughs> even though I'm speaking to you. So Paul, I can see you nice and large in my screen. It's lovely. Uh, hello and, and I'm going back to gallery view it gives you the option to go back so there we go I should have said that right at the beginning uh, so yeah turn on original sound really important and try and use a different gadget if you can uh, for your music um, again I like to um, I like to make it seem like it is a, a it is a choir event so at the beginning I do physical warm-up make sure there's space to stand can you all stand and find some space away from your desk. You might need to tilt your, yeah, tilt your uh, camera there. And so we're going to do one little warm up there, little warm up there, and that together. All right, so a little bit of that, a little bit of that. You can take them through an actual choir warm up, like you would do in a normal choir session. It gives them the sense that there is a real choir session happening. Have your piano or something ready here. Take them through some scales. La 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 la. And make sure they're muted if you do that. Otherwise, it's cacophonous. So let's, uh, let's, let's suggest I've muted you. I've now unmuted you. You can also do this. Let's all sing a note of this chord. Choose one of those and go la. Three, four. Okay, so it's a bit intermittent, it's a bit intermittent, and it doesn't work absolutely brilliantly, uh, but you can actually hear people sing along with you there. As long as there's no rhythm with it, if it's unrhythmic, if it's like just a general kind of uh, chord you can move to, you can do it. And actually, I did this as well. This is, weirdly, this works. You know the distancing uh, is two meters. 
If you're about two meters from your your computer, we all get about two meters from the computer. Try that again. You should hear more voices. So they're la 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 la. Choose one of those. Sing it now. Three, four. <laughs> Okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah. One of you had uh, had a note that went on forever. That's that's great. Um, I'll meet you again. So you can see, yeah, it kind of worked. If you're all the same distance from your gadget, then Zoom isn't trying to promote anybody in front of anybody, and you can actually hear yourself singing together. Although you can't do it with rhythm. That's why I use warm up tracks that I prepared. I have rounds like that by the Water of Babylon, and you can teach a round, stick it on and you can sing together quite soon into the session. Uh, do silly scales, you, you, you'll, have, you'll, have, you'll, have, you'll have played Animal, Vegetable, Mineral with me before. Who has not played Animal, Vegetable, Mineral? Okay, uh, John Page, give me an animal of at least two syllables. Oh, I can't hear you. I've, put, I've chosen somebody who's got their mute to, on twice. No, John? You're off. Giraffe, thank you. Somebody else, give me an adjective that alliterates with giraffe that is appropriate. We need Greedy. something giraffe. Greedy. Beg your pardon? Greedy. Greedy giraffe. Good. We need it. We need. We need a contrasting adjective. Also beginning with G. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Greedy giraffe. Gorgeous giraffe. We're going to do it in e, D flat. Are you ready? Greedy giraffe, gorgeous giraffe, greedy giraffe, gorgeous giraffe, greedy giraffe, gorgeous giraffe, greedy giraffe, gorgeous giraffe. Now, because I'm so loud, it doesn't matter. We're all singing together. Well, I'd like to come down as fast as possible. Greedy giraffe, gorgeous giraffe, greedy giraffe, gorgeous giraffe, greedy giraffe. Greedy giraffe. It's kind of impossible, and it's a little bit of fun. It's a bit silly. Okay, I've done it with food. I've done it with uh, mountains, rivers, countries. Um, Silly songs about food is good. So the first 10 minutes or so, just warm people up. Just give them a sense of fun. Uh, that's what I like to do. And then we go into the, the singing, the teaching of singing. I use tracks. You are aware that the uh, choir community has tracks that are, uh, that are suitable for this sort of thing. And if you're a member, you may have used them already. And uh, they have learning tracks in them as well. So you can send them the individual learning tracks with a week to go and say, we're going to do this piece then. Here's your individual track. Don't send them the full one. Don't send them that yet. Keep that back to the session so that when they get to the session, that's the first chance they have of hearing the choir together. So they feel like it's special coming to choir and they're singing with the choir. Um, we're trying to make up things, different ways of breaking up the session, making it different. Um, uh, we have breaks now. The first time I did uh, choir, community choir, I did uh, a whole two hour session like I normally do with a 15 minute break. 30 people didn't come back after the break because it was just too long, all right? <laughs> now, normally, if you're in the church, it takes 15 minutes to queue up, get your biscuits, queue up, have a chat. In fact, mm. it's hard to get them back, and they're all still there. On, online, at home, 15 minutes, far too long. It takes five minutes to make a cup of tea, get a biscuit. So I have now got there. That sometimes it's still too short. We now have an, a seven-minute break, and we crack on straight away, and this whole session is a bit shorter. I keep trying to think, keep things moving on. Um, other things we can do, play videos to everyone. Break, breaks up the session very nicely. I'm going to show you now, I'm going to share a screen and show you what it's like to share a video that I've prepared. Now, where is it? I'm going to have to, it's now disappeared from my previous screen. Here it is. Now, um, I have found some lovely things uh, while searching online for lockdown choirs. And I sometimes play them to my choir before and after the break simply because it breaks up the session. It's lovely to share something together. It's like going to the cinema. Um, check this out. This is lovely. This is a choir from Tenerife, and this is called the Coro Juvenile de Tenerife, and I adore this. I'm going to sh show you the first bit. Mm. Isn't that lovely? Mm. Very nice. And um, I've discovered that on looking, I've actually contacted the composer. I bought that piece. And when the time is right, I'm going to be teaching that to my choir, uh, maybe over the next uh, ne next few few weeks. And we've discovered some lovely things that, that are out there. Um, and if you find an amazing video that you want to share uh, with your with your choir, then do so. Uh, just ch have you checked out Gitika's uh, uh, two that she's done? 
Uh, are you aware of Gitaka? She's our partner in choir community. I think we sent a link in an email recently. So she's done uh, Tainted Love and now Video Kill the Radio Star. I won't show them now. Just check them out. They are absolutely amazing. And they, she kind of rewrites the rules on this lockdown sort of choir stuff that's going on. So check her out. Very, very entertaining. Um, so uh, other things we do, I'm sure you do other things to break up the monotony. Uh, at the end of the session, I often do a musical quiz where I, uh, I maybe play a bit of music and there are different ways of doing it. You could say, um, can you write, get a pen and paper, write these down? You can get into teams. Uh, we did a thing where you waved immediately and you give the answer. Uh, last week, we did a thing called Fastest Finger, where I got people to actually uh, type in the answer straight away. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to find a piece of music and we're going to do one quiz question. Are you ready for this? So I need, let me just find this. I want the uh, the composer and the title of the piece. So as soon as you know what this is, can you type it into the chat? See if anybody gets this. Right, someone's got it. Jim Tenor to everyone. Wesley, lead me, Lord. Excellent. I think Jim had a slight head, head chance in that because I think he was in the choir that did it earlier on. So there you go. Get an idea. You can do 90s, 60s, 80s music, whatever they like. Uh, you can make it quick, slow, uh, involved. That's always fun. The other thing we've had is um, is a uh, bring the most exotic drink and snack back after the break. And you get you get, people get virtual prizes. And we, we pass certificates to each other from one Zoom uh, window to the other and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, and we're just trying to sort of make each week a little bit different uh, to make sure there's something more to look forward to. It's not the same every time. I've come pretty much to the end of all my notes and I may have missed something out vital. Now's your chance to ask me questions or to fill in the gaps that I have left out. So if you want to contribute now, either with a question or an answer, could you wave at me now and we'll come straight to you? Um, if there's anything else that you want to add or M Marshall, were you waving at me? Okay. Yes. Uh, no, so it's not really Zoom specific. It's more copyright. We've hmm. worked on Zoom. So what are the rules, I suppose, if we do it like this and want to use something? Right, you're, you're cutting out slightly. You can explain exactly what you want to do with the copyright. Are you talking about Sorry, I'm, live? Yeah, it's just it's just what I use really is is copyright um, because I want to I want to do this with my school kids. So if I yes. use something I would use normally in assembly, can I do that on Zoom or is that completely different because it's no, not absolutely fine. It's a closed thing. It's only if you're I think if you are uh, broadcasting it live on Facebook or YouTube, you have to be careful, particularly if it's going to be saved. You'll notice that Facebook have been very, very heavy on this with the locked. If you if you use like a backing track, I mean, the other day I did my choir, you know, we did all the stuff, all my arrangements, public domain stuff. Then I did the 90s pop quiz. I forgot to stop to stop the recording. Robbie Williams came out and they said, you've used Robbie Williams in your recording. <laughs> so you just got to be a bit careful and savvy about what you're using, what you're not using. I would treat it exactly the same as as, as always. You're in a school. Uh, to my lash and you get stuff from from young voices from choir community from uh, out of the arc you bought it from them you can use it in your teaching sessions it's only if you're going to broadcast it in a different way that you need a different license that's all that's all i would say um just be careful that's that's all i mean uh what well, copyright is the same i think under lockdown as 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 it is with other with other things we've discovered some people are a, a bit more lax with the rules than they were normally i think uh YouTube a little more relaxed than Facebook. Definitely, we found that's that's what we found. But within a Zoom session, you're absolutely fine, I think. Uh, but but but, on, but on, uh, as long as you've got you've if you're using the public domain music, we go to the CPDL library for a lot of our classical music. And uh, if you're a member of choir community or any other online uh, music uh, providers, then you're fine. If you've arranged a song yourself. And you haven't got permission from the publisher that is a breach of copyright as it would be in any situation because the the, the very teaching of the music is a copy 
you don't have to print it out that arrangement as a song your it's intellectual property so uh you all, the rules about copyright you'll see them on choir community uh, it's all there in our in our introduction and uh, it's what we're trying to mitigate against so there we go that's what i think anybody else got a question keith yeah, uh, so apologies if you covered this. When you're teaching a piece, say as you do on a Thursday evening, Friday and Wednesday morning, yeah. uh, do you prepare a separate track for each section you're going to teach or do you uh, sort of just dip into the music at the right place? I, I'm making myself clear there. No, you are making yourself absolutely clear. I know exactly what you what you're saying. I personally, I don't use that. I could revert to that if I wanted to. And actually, if you go to the breakout rooms, if you're really clever, you could send the individual learning tracks for the pieces you want them to learn to the person who's leading that section, mm -hmm. and then they could use them with another gadget and play them into their session. If you know what I mean. I use a piano, so I will teach it bit by bit. I'll do it slowly. I say, well, so you your, here. your teaching is only from piano. I teach from the piano, but not necessarily. There was once where I had my Logic open. Now, I use Logic Audio to make my tracks. It's pretty similar to Audacity or GarageBand. You can use any of these multiple audio uh, programs to make tracks. And you can actually you can go inside that if you've got that on. You can mute the ones you don't want to hear. Uh, and so I could, in theory use my logic sessions for teach a song without actually singing it again but because i like to make it like i normally do a session i normally sit at a piano i will sit there i will say basses here's your part Blow how a rose blooming sing that back to me Blow how a rose and we just do it like a normal session and when we're ready when i've sort of learned say half a page or a page i'll say right are you ready i've got the track lined up the full track and off we go and we start playing that when the time is right um uh you know when you've got every, everything ready that you want i wouldn't do two i would try and make it shorter sections i tend to sort of say right okay we've done the verse let's do the verse make sure everyone is up to speed let's sing the verse then i play the track of the verse so they get a feeling like there's a choir there and then when everyone's ready if everyone's not ready if someone still hasn't got it keep checking back with them and saying has everyone got that it's nice to see thumbs up and 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 and, and uh smiles rather than blank faces uh and if they're happy for you to go on you go on you know so it's difficult to gauge the pace of it i'm i'm aware of that but that um, I, I make sure i have all my options there my piano the voice the track different speeds of tracks as well if you want to do a slow one and a fast one have it all ready before you start your session um and it'll depend on who's in the session and what they want because if their feedback to you is if what they want then you will go their pace and you won't go too fast or too slow does thanks. that answer it in some regard yeah thanks yeah. thanks thanks keith cheers anyone else got anything they want to ask or say there's a really good a question on it helen williams coming to you yeah lovely thank you i was just i've just put it on to chat but it's probably going to be quicker for me to ask you directly the disclaimer that you read do you read that at the start of every session that you do because you're recording it or is it just for facebook live um, it's only because we're going online. No, it's for recording as well, because um, because we knew we were recording these to then edit down and put on, on YouTube. Right, uh, so if I'm just recording for my choir and I'm going to send out whoever's, whoever's been in that session or, yeah. or, or missed the session and I'm just sending yeah. it to, to the private group, do I have to read a disclaimer then? I would still do it to make sure they're aware that they have image and what they've done is going to be sent to other people. Okay. I, I, would, I would say it, yeah. Just really, really batten down and make sure you're on the safe side yeah, okay. Okay. yeah. and i think we're gonna we're gonna become more aware of that we're gonna do it a bit more than we did before i might even do it with my youth choir and my community choir as well because we're beginning to sort of record a bit more of our sessions and get them out there so okay. um does that make sense yeah that's really good thank you and yeah. it's been brilliant thank you so much Someone else asked a question earlier, they might not be here anymore, when in the in the base uh, sectional room about uh, pricing. Um, and somebody said, do you, do you still charge? And uh, when the lockdown happened straight away, one of my choirs stopped completely and didn't want to do anything for a, a few weeks. Um, but the other two, as I said, were already isolating because the average age was well over 60 and um, I had to carry on. So we went straight away 
but I didn't have any higher fees for the church. So one of the choirs I run myself, it's totally my business. So I locked, uh, locked a bit of money off. So it was, you know, say four quid a session rather than five quid. Um, uh, but it was still a two hour session with a lot of preparation. So I did charge them for it. Some people have difficulty paying by bank transfer. So they owe me, it's fine. Uh, I, I still take a bit of money off for if they pay the full term, they can have, you know, uh, 13 sessions of the price, uh, 15 sessions for the price of 13, uh, for the whole term, or they want to pay uh, half termly, then that's, that's a little bit less and they want to pay weekly. That's fine. Um, but I think you should definitely, if you can still charge for what you do because it's a lot of work and it's really exhausting <laughs> mentally and physically uh, as you will and you're all nodding at me now uh, because you know you've tried it and you know it's mentally just to have this focus on this small screen for two two hours or whatever it is and even on tinier screens within that small screen and to try and gather get your head around everything that's happening it can really really be a struggle and it's a really it's the it's the question we're all asking isn't it when are we going to be able to sing again with our choirs in a real space i i would imagine that we're going to be probably singing in a couple of months outdoors, probably in reverberant areas, maybe in town squares where there's a bit of acoustic. Um, uh, and we may even be building new venues, I don't know, with curved walls outside. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I can, who knows? Who knows? But um, hopefully, it's not, nothing's going to stop us singing, is it, really? We're going to keep singing. And what's lovely is that Zoom has enabled us to sing something, somehow, sort of together. <laughs> <laughs> in some way or other and um if you can make it work for you then then uh, <laughs> yeah. but if you're leading the session you've got to have control over the music because of the stopping yeah. and starting and then and, and people come to you saying oh the volume's wrong i need to have that up and down do you have to have that control vital yeah, so, so if we if i did that but then allocate like you've just said the different jobs to other people that would yes but the leading of the music must be you yeah. and you yeah. All right, we're down Thank to one page that, now. Thanks. There's 15 left, <laughs> you hardy souls. You made it right through <laughs> two hours. Bless you. Anyone else got anything you want to say or contribute? You wouldn't be here otherwise. Uh, Paul, talk to us. Um, I was just going to ask in terms of, um, because we're going to be using a lot of backing tracks um, yes. to kind of uh, provide the accompaniment in yeah. um, our sessions. Um, and I was trying to sort of figure out a way of being able to sort of play that, but the video being on the conductor who can then hopefully try and keep people in time um, yeah. and um, possibly uh, sort of giving people sort of directions as, as we're going along. Um, and I've sort of been reading up about sort of pinning videos and um, sort of kind of swapping no, cameras no, no. around and... No way. It's never going to happen. Not unless we, uh, we reintervent the internet. Mm -hmm. So the person who is conducting, i.e. you or me, yeah. has to be the same person generating the music. It has right. to come to the same place. This is the other reason why, Jen, it won't work with somebody playing yeah. music and you leading. Because as you can see, if, I'm, if I've got a piece of music here I'm, I'm conducting to, Say, um, let's do this. This is okay. So you'll see this now. This should look good for you. Now, that was in three four. Was it vaguely in time to what you heard? Pretty much. So it just doesn't matter on your broadband, however slow your machine is, what you received was my picture and sound coming to you at the same time. But it doesn't matter about your broadband, what your delay is. Anyone individually is receiving that at the same time, which is why the music has to be ideally in the same room as what I'm, what I'm doing. Yeah. Sometimes when I've shared through my laptop, the music gets ahead of the, the sound gets ahead of the picture, which is something that happens. Happens on Facebook. If you notice, if you record on Facebook, the sound gets out from the from the picture. It's a nightmare, and you have to sort of take the sound off again, reassign it, re-edit it, and put it back on again. So is that just picking that up from kind of the microphone that's in front of you? Yeah, microphone. I have separate speakers. The microphone. That's the, that. For me, that is. I've just somehow hit upon that, and it's always worked. And people have, have remarked, remarked to me, well, the choir sounds good. Sounds like a choir. Sounds like in the room with you. 
And when anyway, if I'm at the right distance away, I've got the right volume there, mm. which is why I keep checking about volume. Is it okay? You know, I sing along. I'm still a conductor. I still have things to say. Oh, out, you ready? Altos, in you come. And there. You still want to be heard over the top, but you still want to hear the music underneath. If you've got that gated thing on, like you're playing it from a different machine, it will cut over and you won't hear the music anymore. So it has to sound, this is why that turn on original sound is vital, because mm. it has to be mm. the sound in the room, that's what you're hearing. And there's no gating, there's no compression, there's no fiddling about with the, with the, with the sound. Um, and it's quite marked the difference if you have it on and off. But that's why I would, I would say, in my experience, always generate the music yourself. Be the conductor and then it'll be in time. Anything else is going to be out of time, isn't going to help, isn't going to work particularly if you're one one person conducting and another person generating the sound. Yeah. You'll find there are always delays and it's out of time. Um, that's my experience. Uh, does that, is that going to help you, Paul? <laughs> yes. No, it, it sort of kind of figures out a problem that we've been trying to think through the logic of for about the last two days. So yeah. um, it's it kind of leading me down the path that I, I thought I was going in. Yeah. If anybody got advice on producing a video, choir video. Producing a video, what we're like, like what we've seen, like there's some multiple videos. Yeah. Yes. Well, I'm in the middle of doing one. So I haven't finished one myself. I'm not the one who's editing it. You have to, <laughs> you have to have somebody who's willing to sit for hours in front of Final Cut Pro or uh, what's the PC equivalent? What's the, there's another one. What's the Microsoft equivalent of Final Cut Pro? Anyone know it? Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> Premiere Movie Maker. Um, iMovie doesn't do it. You can only do two on iMovie at once. You have to you have to invest in one of these quite in, uh, pricey um, uh, programs, and they're very fiddly, and it means a lot of fiddling about. And you have to be very um, specific about your requirements for your singers. But it's worth doing. We think it's not our, my choir's favourite thing. We've got 100 members in my choir. We've only had 22 submissions because I don't think they really want to hear themselves sing on their own. Because actually what you're doing, when you do a video like that, it's not singing together. It's actually highlighting the singing on their own. And some of them don't like that. They only want to hear the together thing. Now, I did actually play them back the last week, coming to you in a minute, Celia, our first little verse of 25 people. And that encouraged the others because it sounded okay. So you, it may be a drip, drip, drip thing. Do a verse with a few of them, show it's going to happen, and it'll be it'll be fine. But they, what, what have they got to record? They need two gadgets. They need a phone. They need an iPad. They need something else. They need something to record on. They need to make sure their face is nice. They need to make sure. It, so one guy I know did twenty five versions, and it half killed him. So it, it's not going to be a positive experience for everybody. Mm -hmm. But if you can do it, I think it's great. And um, you know, I can show you some of the there's some amazing ones. Watch the Gitika ones. They are absolutely incredible. It's taken her a couple of weeks each one. Celia, what, what did you want to say? Oh, I'm unmuted. You are? Um, yeah, just, just to say that I've been doing the Gareth Malone thing. Okay, right. It's a project and uh, it will make me keep singing and yes. work at things. And I found the recording of the videos incredibly difficult. I did hours yeah. and hours trying to get it right, trying to get my phone in the right place yeah. so that the picture was all right, trying to get it absolutely right. Every time I'd make a mistake, I'd come in under the note something i'd have to do it again mm. it was absolutely oh, dire. Yeah. As I've done, gosh well well it's, done for trying it i'm, I'm a yeah, really reasonably experienced singer and i think for anyone who's not <laughs> as as i'm sure gareth has lots of people taking part in that who you know i just think how on, how on earth you know do they do it and then yeah, have they have they finished doing that one have they edited it have you spotted yourself have you spotted yourself haven't haven't no they haven't on the that's taken them a while isn't it yeah but there's so many people taking yeah. part that you know you're probably there are not lots of yourself off anyway yeah you, you don't have to search very far to find them uh there's the stay at home choir with tori longdon she's done a couple yeah. there i think they're more classical ones vivaldi yeah. and stuff and they're about to do a new one i think with the swingle singers okay. it's going to be a i did look into that but i there was so yeah. much stuff about the Swingle Singers. It was a bit like celebrity, celebrity. I know, it's a bit like, oh, really? We just want to do something. And in fact, yeah. I tried, uh, talking about big things, I myself tried to sing in the Eric Whitaker one last weekend. 
So Eric Whitaker, who I mean, he did it years ago. He's been doing this for years. This is this is his home turf. And there's number six. And I was desperate to do this. I really wanted to do it. I left it a bit, and then I had a day to do it. I spent all day blooming doing it, and then in the end, I failed to upload it properly because I didn't couldn't. I think there are instructions about how to reduce the size of the film to make it work. Oh. Didn't work with my machine, so I thought I'd down uploaded it. It didn't work. I didn't get the certificate. My daughter did it. She's on it, and I'm not. So never mind. Oh. So, <laughs> there are seventeen thousand people who are on that. That's, that's mm. going to be amazing. It's a beautiful piece, by the way. Um, mm. uh, but of course, but um, yes, can be quite a stressful thing. I don't know if it's worth it in the end. You've got to, you've got to do your homework, and you've got to have somebody who's technically right up there, and mm. is going to keep everyone buoyed up. Um, we've chosen a little thing with our community choir, which is lots of little tiny phrases re repeated, which you put in again, and they come back in different ways. So they didn't have much to record, but we, we're only halfway through the first bit of it. It was going to take us weeks and weeks. Hello, Megan. Okay, I've been I've done um, the last two sessions with Mark Delisser's choir. Oh, lovely! Old yeah. choir. Love Mark. That, yeah, that was great fun. It was super super easy. I was so apprehensive. The backing tracks he provided were absolutely superb, and the advice that he gave was top notch. And the finished video was just so much fun. Very good. Um, it, it's it's my so everybody my timeline is public on facebook megan skinner if you go look down my page you'll find the link to the world choir i posted it a week or so ago the world choir, okay, and it's, it. It, it's just it's so much fun it's so much fun look for mark delisser on facebook because he posts stuff about it every now and again and it made it absolutely so easy well, that that, and I, I have followed his instructions when I've been doing things with my choirs and it's just made it a dream. Good. Best instructions I've found so far for doing this kind of recording. And are they available there? Are they still on the website there, his instructions? Are sort of like, is they freely available, how to do it sort of thing? I can I can forward you that link if you want, Craig. Oh, please, yeah, yeah, and we'll make it available. If, if, if they've made it available, then why shouldn't we? That would be good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not something personally I'm massively keen on. I prefer this. I prefer whatever this is. Oh yeah, me too. Zoom. It's but not it was, we're not singing together, but it's interactive. But it was, you it know, was I, great fun. It was great fun yeah. knowing that I was going to get to see this finished product at the end. It was lovely. That's great. Thanks, Megan. That's encouraging. So look, it's obviously clearly worth doing if it's done well. So, can we can we email you if something comes up and we think you might know the answer? Yeah, or of course. It might, it might take a while to get, to get back. <laughs> yeah, but Piers is really, really um, attentive at emails, and he tries yeah. to answer everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think it's um, if you're already in touch with him, it's Piers at Quark at Quark yeah. Community. Or it's okay. Info at QuarkCommunity.net, and you always ask, and and P he responds to anybody. If anyone has a problem with the music or downloading or files or whatever, but if you if if you haven't used Quark Community Music, I would recommend you have a little. Just you can go for free. Go and browse through the entire catalog there. We're about to put a whole load of new stuff on as well. And in fact, next month, I think we've got Christmas stuff coming on because people are already downloading Christmas stuff. Would you believe it? There's a lot of church music choirs that are coming on with us. And in fact, we're going to be opening in a couple of weeks time, opening a new, whole new section in uh, choir community, which is um, uh, classical choral music as well. So we're going to go into the public domain classical choral side we're going to have Mozart, Bird, Talis, uh, Gibbons, Elgar, Parry, and we're going to be, we've, we're starting to record them and have recordings and, and decent scores of that available as well. So that, that will cater for church choirs and choirs who are used to that kind of thing, because uh, we think this is, thing's going to go on for quite a while.